Hi, everybody. It is a uh, happy Thursday, and uh, I hope you, you're all doing well. Today is going to be an awesome Facebook Live. We've got one of our top leaders, Trisha Zook, here with us, Trisha uh, from Edmonton. And um, we're excited to have Trisha talk about duplication. She is one of the greatest at it in the company. Um, and so we're excited to have Trisha. I'm going to bring her on and, um, and introduce Trisha. You all know her, but hello, Trisha. Hi. Thanks for doing this today. We're, uh, we're always happy to see you on Facebook Live and uh, always eager to, to um, learn from you and your team. You guys, you guys are doing some incredible things there in Canada and beyond. Your team is really expanding now into uh, all of North America, aren't you? We are. <laughs> well, that is uh, that's pretty awesome. You guys are doing some amazing things. In fact, um, we are headed up to Edmonton in September. We cannot wait for that event. Um, I understand you guys had had an event there um, just over the weekend. We did. We had a consultant event. It was so much fun. And I have to say this one was headed up by Tracy Taylor. So she was pretty passionate. She didn't want to wait till September to ga gather the groups. And so she really wanted to put this on. And so I obviously helped her with that. And we had a great time and had a lot of fun and learning. And Jody, actually, um, our one USA friend, came up and joined us and provided some awesome social media training with Tracy. Oh, cool. Oh, that's awesome. Well, we are, we're really excited to, to get up there. September 20th and 21st, we'll be there for Reveal 19. And um, are, are you getting excited for that? I am getting excited. And I'm looking at sending out save the dates to all of my customers. We're going to pack the house. Yes, we are. <laughs> and I can't wait to see all of our U.S. friends there as well. It's going to be fun. Uh, Edmonton's awesome. It's my backyard. And I can't wait to show you around. I know we can't we can't wait to get up there. So we're the event is Friday night. It starts at 7 p.m. But we're planning on coming in Thursday, and we're gonna come um, hang out with you guys, and uh, we're gonna have some fun there in Edmonton before the event. Can't wait. Awesome. Well, Trisha, we are we're anxious to hear from you. You gave us um, you gave us a little taste of of this training at leadership. Um, a couple months ago, but we um, were anxious to hear more from you about duplication. What are you doing um, that that you've seen works? And uh, give us a little of um, a little of your advice today, would you? All right, let's get going. So, duplication is a huge topic. It's 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 big. So we could probably spend an entire day on this topic at least an hour on this topic, but I think I've put it down to 15 minutes to share here on this live for you. So recently I was wanting to do a training with my team on persistence to inspire them to keep being persistent. And so what I did is I actually went and dug up my training that I did at the 2016 Thrive Life Convention, and it was called Persistence and Putting pride aside and I had it recorded so I was going back and I was watching that video. Now in my training, um, I mentioned on one of the slides that our job as a Thrive Life consultant was pretty easy. It was pretty simple. It was to love Thrive, share Thrive, and find others to do the same. And I'm watching my very own training and I'm kind of giggling and laughing at it, at myself, because if, if you think that our job is just to love Thrive, share Thrive, and find others to do the same, I kind of think that you're missing the entire point of this business, to be frank. So our job, in my opinion, as business builders in this business, so not just the social sellers, not just the hobbyists, not just those who think it's fun, they just want to dabble, they enjoy the perks, they enjoy the free food, a little bit of side income, maybe they enjoy some free trips because you can also do that as a social seller. There's all these you know, great benefits, but I'm not speaking to those people right now, I'm speaking to the people who are looking to build a long-term large residual income business with Thrive Life. So the business builders, what our job is, is to help our consultants be successful. So in other words, our job is to enroll consultants, help get them started, and keep them going. 
One of my favorite quotes is that leaders don't create followers, they create more leaders. So if we want to be leaders, our job is to create and help nurture more growing leaders. So in my opinion, our focus shouldn't be on collecting many, 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 many customers. Okay, that's great. Our focus shouldn't be 30 new deliveries per month. That's awesome if that happens. And as you're sharing, that very well may happen, and it does. But what our focus needs to be on is our downline. It needs to be on our team and helping them be successful, creating those leaders. And that is how you build this business. And even with, for example, the fantasy getaway trip that is on right now, the duplication points is how you earn the trip a lot, lot easier than going out there and doing and doing and doing and doing and doing by yourself, right? Have those duplication points get you there a lot quicker. A lot of my points on that trip are coming from duplication. So a few tips that I can give you about this. I'm going to just kind of get into the nitty gritty here. So the first one is relationships, guys. Relationships are so, so, so important in this business. I know that I have team members that are on my team solely because of the relationships that they have built within the team. I have people that are not out there promoting Thrive Life actively at all, but they'll show up to my team events every single month and hang out because we're friends and they hang out with other team members all the time because we have that relationship, okay? I know that there are people on this team that maybe were promoting Thrive Life in the past and that was a season of their life where they had that time, energy, and desire. And right now that is just not something that they can do and that is okay. And in fact, maybe they would be purging themselves as a consultant if not for the relationship that I have with them, I'm told. <laughs> and so keeping and nurturing all of those relationships that you build with your team is huge in the retention of your team, the morale of your team, and helping you build that long-term residual income business. So. I have a load of social sellers on my team that I love and I treat no differently than any of the business builders on my team. And so some of you might say to yourself, well, isn't she talking about creating leaders? Like, wouldn't you just focus on your leaders and, um, and build that? You know, why would you focus the same on the social sellers? Okay, so the thing about people who want to just stay in this business and build a long-term residual business and they're just you know dedicated for the long run it's just sort of a numbers game in that those people are few and far between first of all and your social seller today might be your business builder of tomorrow or two years from now or three years from now and you don't know the social sellers are going to keep your volume high the social sellers are going to keep your morale high and the social sellers are going to keep your team going you know, so slapping the business at people so hard when they enroll oftentimes, and you're like, okay, you gotta be a leader, we got to get you go, to get you going, you gotta hit the truck, you gotta do this, you gotta go that, we gotta residual, here's the money you can make. All of these things, oftentimes, I'm sorry, but you might be scaring them away. So some of you also may be thinking, okay, well, Trisha's just so lucky that she just finds these people and she just people who want to work the business, you know. And that's not true at all, guys. My uh, duplication points, more or less, are often coming from my social sellers. Social sellers can hit track. It's not that, that hard. Social sellers can hit builder bonus. It's not that, that hard. So these things are things that social sellers can do. So nurture them, and you never know who will become a business builder. Let's take Deborah for example. Last time I checked, Deborah was on the very top spot for the Fantasy Getaway contest. Um, I'm assuming that she's still there. Well, Deborah didn't start working the business until she had enrolled for 
10 months. So she had enrolled and 10 months went by before she decided to work the business. And now look at Deborah, you just never know. I had one great team member on my team who has been on my team since 2014. So she's been my team member for five years and she hasn't done much with the business and that's okay. But she knew that I was always there to support her and we had that relationship and we kept in touch. And when she decided to go active, she knew that I would be there to help her and support her. And she hit builder bonus for the first time this year five years later. So you just never know. It takes time. Time is key. Things can change in people's lives and you just never know. So nurture the relationships with everyone. If you want more tips on how to turn social sellers into business builders, go and reference uh, my live interview in this corporate group. That was one of the topics. I'll stop right there. So number two, I wanna introduce you to the concept of building versus increasing. So this is something that was taught to me by Sandy Pearson and she taught to a bunch of other leaders as well. Um, and so think of your Thrive Life business as a house. So increasing is increasing your foundation. And I talk with my hands and I'm getting cut off as I do this. So you can't see all the, the gestures that I'm making. So increasing is increasing your foundation, right? So the, the lower part of your house, okay? It's getting bigger and bigger and wider and wider and wider. Increasing in your Thrive Life business is your own personal results. So that's things, your own personal work. That's things like hitting builder bonus. That would be considered increasing. You're getting your loyal customers. You're enrolling. You're doing the things. You're doing all the things. That's increasing the foundation of your house. Now, what about those walls? You need walls in a house, right? You need to build that house and you need walls. So building, building your business is all about going up. And building your business is things like taking care of your team, getting to know them, being interested in their success, helping them, supporting them. It's not about you. It's about your team. So increasing is about you. That's your personal results. And building is all about your team. It's not about you, okay? That is what your house is going to look like. Now I want you to think, I want you to think of your own house, your own Thrive Life business as a house. What does it look like? Is it really, 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 really wide? Does it take like five city blocks and like one story high? Or is it really, 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 really tall, like a skyscraper? What does your business look like? A lot of us wanna build a really large business that's super duper duper high, right? So think about that. And the thing about building and increasing is they can't be done at the same time, all the time, all the time, or else you're gonna burnt out. So I encourage you to try to work on some balance there. And now that's a whole other training in itself, so I'm just gonna stop there. Um, another point, as you're focusing more on your team, um, I hope that it comes from a place of genuine care, that you genuinely care about your team members. People can typically sense whether you genuinely care about them or you're just doing it because you ultimately believe that the only way for you to see success and thrive life is to you know, hang out with your team or focus on your team. I once heard somebody say, referring to me caring genuinely on a personal level about my team members as a strategy, something like implementing Trisha's strategy of befriending my team. Please, please, please don't consider this a strategy. Genuinely care about your team members and their success over your own and everything else will come, and that is key. I wanna share a short story with you. I have a friend who happens to be on my downline, and she has been for several years. Now, she's really passionate about essential oils, and so she's, one, she's with one of the large essential oil direct sales companies, and that's fine, and that's great. And for the first year, um, I noticed that her and her upline, who we'll call Sam, um, they seemed really close. And my friend, we're gonna call her Dana, every time she would post on Facebook, 
um, Sam would be right there commenting and they seemed like they were doing a lot of team events and they were going out and doing things together. And I thought, hey, they have this really great relationship. And at the time, Dana was, you know, really into the essential oils and promoting it hard and just really loving it. And that's great. Um, and then one day, Dana decided that she wanted to take a tiny step back from that and more or less just be a social seller. She loved the oils. She wants to promote them, but just not on the same, maybe to the same extent that she was. Now, how do you think Sam reacted? Now, suddenly, after, you know, a year in, or whatever of friendship, suddenly Sam didn't really want much to do with Dana anymore, um, just like that, because she wasn't going to be bringing in the same volume, and she wasn't going to be recruiting, and she wasn't going to be benefiting Sam to the way that she once was. And now Sam's kind of like, eh, I don't really have much use for you anymore. Now, how do you think that makes Dana feel? And how motivated do you think Dana is now? So the moral, moral of the story, guys, for me, <laughs> is I'm trying to encourage you, don't be like Sam. <laughs> All right, uh, one more kind of section I wanted to focus on for you guys is that, okay, I wanna give a disclaimer with it also a little bit. You know, my topic is duplication. So I'm speaking on duplicating and duplication. So you can be successful in different ways in this business with very specific situations. So you know, maybe you're an online celebrity. Maybe you have a network of thousands of people who know, like, and trust you already. Maybe you're a professional blogger. Maybe you're you're these things. But those those guys are very unique individual situations. Now, the next section here that I want to talk about, I'm speaking to the masses of Thrive Life. I'm speaking to the vast majority of everyone that does not have those special situations like us. That how success is going to happen for the general public of Thrive Life is through duplication. Duplication is how success is gonna happen for most of us. So I want you to ask yourself, when you are out there working your business, are you appearing duplicatable to someone? If somebody's looking in at your business, would they think, that they can do it. In other words, are you making your Thrive Life business appear overly complicated or that it requires special skills, special talent, maybe that it requires a large investment, maybe that it requires hours and hours and hours and hours of work to get the results that you get because somebody is looking in from the outside to your business and analyzing whether they could do it or would want to do it you have to ask yourself, what are you making your business appear like? So to inspire duplication, to inspire that, you need to look duplicatable. You need it to look that anyone can do this business, but not that anyone can do this business. You want them to want to do this business. So I'll share a couple stories with you also. All right. So there's a company, um, what can I call them? Uh, so they sell food storage containers, containers to store leftovers and food and stuff like that. Okay. Food storage containers. So that's what they do. And so what they do around here anyway, is they have these meal prep parties and it's great. So what you do is you pay a fee. It's a large fee and you show up at the host's house and everything is done for you. So they have you know, pre-cooked any of the things that they need to. They have just set everything out in stations. And so you go around to every station and you make a variety of meals and how they promote their um, product in this situation is that sometimes they'll be using the product to make the meals. So if you had to mince garlic, maybe they'd be using one of their products to do that. And the other thing is um, you take your meals home in their food storage containers. So that's how they, they sell it. It's included in the fee, right? So it's it's great, it's great. But the consultant for this company does all the work. And it's a lot of work. They have to do all of the grocery shopping. They have to do all of the setup, all of the cleanup. I mean, herbs, spices, meats, to buy everything for like, five meals for like 10 people or whatever it is. And so 
I've attended a couple of these myself, but each time that I have attended, one of the topics of conversation that took place between me and some of the other guests that were there was how we would never do this job. We would never want to be the consultant working this business. How awesome is it as a guest because we don't have to do anything and we just show up and we go home with meals as the consultant? That was just like the last thing that appealed to all of the guests at that event. That is not what you as a Thrive Life consultant want to portray. I'll give you another example as it pertains to our business. So, for example, say you decide that one of the ways that you want to promote your business is with trade shows. Okay, that's great. Now, think about it. Is your trade show set up really, really large and complicated? And did it require a large investment? And does it require several trips to your vehicle? Just something to just reflect on and think about. Because if people are watching you, the other vendors are watching you, the people who are coming by are watching you, and they're thinking to themselves, could I do that or would I want to do that? Now, if you have this massive, complicated system set up on your in your booth, they're going to say to themselves, if I enroll as a consultant and I want to work this business, this is what I need to do. And that may not be something that you want to portray. Now, I'm going to tell you the leaders on my team who excel at trade shows and do a lot of them, they set up and tear down in 10 minutes flat with one trip to the car. It's extremely duplicatable. And I'll tell you what, they're the ones getting the enrollments and the duplication happening on their teams. So if you're doing trade shows and you're doing a massive setup and you're getting tons of customers maybe, and even tons of enrollments, but none of those enrollments are inspired to work the business, you may just have to ask yourself, Am I going overboard? Am I making it seem like they would need to put all this work in as well? So again, you always want to make everything that you do very appealing to other people. You want people to say, oh my gosh, she just looks like she has the best time working as a Thrive Life consultant. It looks so rewarding and fun and easy. I want to do what she does. I want to do what she's doing and get the results she's getting. You know, you want that to be what people say when they look at you doing your business. In fact, <laughs> I had somebody enroll under me who I have known for several years. And when I asked her what prompted her to enroll under me, she straight up told me, well, I see how successful you are. And I figure if you can do it, I can do it. <laughs> so, but that guy's, you know, kind of a little bit offensive, but that guy's is the exact thing that we are trying to portray. If we can do it, they can do it. OK, and that's going to inspire them to duplicate. I do nothing special. I don't do anything with videos. I don't really have much of a social media presence. I don't do any of the things, any of these marketing special things. You know, I don't do it. But when people see that, they go, well, if she can do it, I can do it. OK, yeah, sure. I'll give it a whirl. And that is how the duplication begins. So just to close out. Um, prioritize the relationships with your team. That should be your priority in this business as a builder. Customer care is important. I understand that. But your business is not going to grow exponentially when your focus is on your customer care. It's not going to help momentum happen on your team when your focus is on your customer care. So prioritize those relationships, focus on your team, and remember that your job is to help your team members be successful. During the $30 kit promo, I had 300 people join our team. I only personally enrolled 28 of them, so that's about 9%. You cannot do it alone. Momentum is gonna happen quicker with a team. So that's what I would like your focus to be on if you're building this business. And uh, Eric, those are my thoughts for today. <laughs> You're awesome. Thanks, Trisha. Um, you are you are awesome. I think um, there is so much there is so much about you. I, I think when when you wrapped it up, um, talking about are you are you duplicatable? I think that is I think that's a question that we all need to 
to to ask ourselves. And I think um, I think it's so funny the story you tell about the person saying, "Well, if you can do it, I can do it." I think that is so funny on one hand, and you say, "Yeah, maybe a little offensive," but but probably not offensive because that's exactly what you're going for, right? Mm -hmm. It just looks so easy that if you can do it, I can do it. And I think that is I think that's awesome. <laughs> I have I have just a couple of questions if you don't mind if you if you have another couple minutes. Sure. Um, I think I think when you talk about relationships, and there was someone that commented, I think it was Lori that said you are the queen of relationships, and I think we all agree you are you are really good at this. You're naturally good, and and others aren't so naturally good at at just building relationships and having relationships. I think um, you, you actually mentioned that your your other training on um, turning social sellers into business builders. I think I think you touched on it a lot there. But would you just give us maybe a little hint of when you talk about nurturing that you need to you need to spend some time nurturing? Can you just give us a little taste of of what you mean by nurturing? What do you do to nurture? That's actually a really good question. Um, and and there's some misconceptions. And actually, I didn't realize it until somebody from another team said, Trisha, I don't understand, you know, whenever I reach out to people and ask them, how's it going? Like, have they been sharing Thrive? Have they seen any success, da, da, da. Uh, you know, they just go, no. And I said, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. When you're reaching out to your social sellers, you're making it about Thrive? And like, have they been sharing Thrive? And can you help them share Thrive? No, 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 no. <laughs> So what you want to do in nurturing the relationships with people is not make it about Thrive because then if you're always making it about Thrive, there it is that you just care about the business. You just care about your own business and how you can grow your own business and you're not caring about them as a person. So what you really need to do is take a genuine interest in them. So when you reach out to your social sellers, you're not asking about Thrive. You're asking how, how they're doing. Hey, Sandy, how's it going? Have you been enjoying the summer so far? End of school year is so crazy. I know your kids are in so many activities. How are you keeping up with that? Oh, yeah, so-and-so has a concert. Oh, yeah, my so-and-so has a concert too next week. Oh, they're so cute. Whatever it is, you need to make it about them. How are you enjoying your camping? How are you enjoying this? How I like to even do it with um, special events like holidays. So did you have a good long weekend? Uh, Merry Christmas. Um, whatever it is. You know, you're making it about them. And then if they want to bring up Thrive, cool. Especially if you ask about camping. If they want to say, oh, yeah, thank you. I made this wicked recipe with those eggs and the, you know, the sausage crumbles. Awesome. Cool. You can talk about Thrive. But your goal is not talking about Thrive. Actually, it isn't. And that may sound counterintuitive to some of you. But your end goal is simply creating that relationship so that they are somebody who says, you know what? My leader is a good person. My leader cares about me. And that's when they have that feeling of the warm fuzzies or whatever, and they just know that you're genuine and yeah. they want to stay on your team and maybe they'll want to pursue thrive. Who knows? I, I love that. I think that I think that is just spot on. As far as building relationships and nurturing relationships, um, the other thing you said, it was later, later in the presentation, but I think you um, I think it's just um, everyone should post it on their wall. It, it's not about you. That's, I love that because I, I think you're absolutely right. And I see that in you. I see that your, your team knows that. Your team knows that it's not about Trisha Zook. It, it's about them. And, and I think that is so key. So that was actually the other point I was going to bring up um, is you mentioned that it's not about you. And I think that's key. And, um, I don't know if there's anything else you, you want to say to that, but I was going to say you kind of brushed over it in your presentation, but it's such a key point that it's not about you, but you basically just, just talked about that. So, <laughs> Yeah, just well, the, the idea of building and increasing, you have to realize that when you're only getting your personal results and people sometimes think that's what this business is. Oh, well, I'm just hitting BB every month. I'm getting my personal results. I'm, I'm enrolling. I'm getting my customers. I'm doing customer care. I'm talking to my team. I'm doing all these things. But that's all about you, and that's only half the business. So if you want to do the other half of the business, the real building, 
that's where you have to really just focus on your people and the relationships. And you might think that's not working. You might think that, well, if I just sit around all day and chat with people, that's not working. Oh, trust me, that's building your business more than anything else. Hmm. Well, that's that's very insightful. And I, I'm guessing that it's it's maybe a little bit different. Uh, it's a different approach for a lot of a lot of us. Um, the idea of uh, you mentioned in the beginning that um, leaders don't create followers, leaders create more leaders. And I love that as well. And I think some of us, when we think about that, we think, okay, so what do I need to do to, to build these leaders? Um, but we take that pers um, perspective of what do I need to do to help them build their business so I can help build my business when you're really saying, no, make it about the relationship. And that and that will in turn grow, grow the relationship, which will grow the business. Is that right? Am I understanding that right? Absolutely, absolutely. And your interest in someone, you know, with the story with Dana and Sam, those aren't the real names, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, your interest in someone shouldn't be directly related to what they can do for your business. It should just be related to are they good people? Like, do you click? Like, you genuinely want to help them in life, you know? Yeah. Um, and just, I guess that's my overall point. Well, I love it. I think um, I think you you've made this point, but I'll just say it again. Um, the The idea about a relationship is that you have genuine interest in that person, and when you know, when you get to know that person, and not just about how they are as a business person, but as a friend, you get to know their their um, family life or their lifestyle or whatever that is, when you get to know their strengths and their weaknesses and what they're going through, um, that's when a relationship really happens and that's when you can help each other. And and I think that's that's what Thrive Life is about. That's what this business is about, is helping others create a more thriving life. And so I, just, I love what you've said. I think um, just in, in closing for, for me, I think um, the thing that you hit on with the idea that someone someone called it a strategy and that is offensive to you. And I think that is um, that that's a perfect um, what that that is the the ideal that we get to is when it's not a strategy. That's just how we are. We we love people. And um, that's why we're in this business is to help each other and um again to have a more thriving life so i i love that i think you've hit on some really really good points um i will probably go watch this again uh, because you've you've hit on some really good points so thank you trisha you're awesome thanks for having me you too all right and we'll see you in edmonton on september 20th actually the 19th i'll probably see you on the 19th um, but I hope everyone everyone just makes plans right now to get there. It's going to be an awesome, awesome event. It'll be um, it'll be so. Uh, in, in fact, just just in closing, I I did something this morning down in the kitchen that um, had to do maybe with testing a little something that might be um, announced on September twentieth. That is going to be just it'll just. Um, It'll just blow your minds. It's just, it's something that we've never done before. So uh, very exciting. I hope to see all of you there. Trisha, I will definitely see you there and um, we'll see you then. All right, take care everyone.